Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year to everybody. I want to see that many of you got younger, uh, thinner, and richer, and more anointed. Oh, praise the Lord. Are you ready this morning? I'm going to share with you. Welcome all the people online. I'm going to share with you about 2020 word, what God is saying, what the Holy Spirit is saying for the world, for the church, and for Israel. I don't think we're going to have the time to go to all, all over it, but at least I'm going to share some things that are very key and important to you. So I'm going to go to the scriptures in the book of Isaiah. If you go to the book of Isaiah, this is very important. Today, every time there's new season that comes, always a new season, a new time comes with three things. Comes with expectation. And God does that. God does in us. Because many of you, many of us, went through so many things in life. And it's when, when the new season comes, it's like God saying to you, I want you to have hope for the future. So expectation, instructions, this is very important. Every time a new season comes, it comes with expectation, instructions. This is very, very key. And opportunities. Say with me, opportunities. So every time, whenever you see a new season, those three things always come. I share with you on the 31st on that. And we, this morning, I will do some predictions. And what I'm saying, I'm doing, I'm not myself, I'm not inventing or anything. It's just, I went to the presence of God, and in the presence of God, got to start opening my ears to hear. And also, there's some things that I will share from the Word and certain prophecies that many men of God, apostles, evangelists, uh, prophets, that also been hearing in the same direction. So anytime I, I, I hear a word from God, I see what my spiritual sons are coming and my prophets even in the house saying, okay, this is what I'm hearing. And some of them, we're going to hear some of them today. So I think if you call to be a prophet, you're called to, you must have the responsibility to have at least a word from God to give direction to the people. You can call yourself a prophet or an apostle and you don't have anything for the people. Because in the times we are living in, we must give direction to the people. I wish I can hear an amen over here. So we must tell them what, what to do in crisis. There's crises that are coming upon the church, upon the world. So we need to know and give people direction. Every time there's a prophet, you can say you're a prophet. And you don't have a burden to have a word for the people. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you're an apostle... We always have to have that um, cutting edge prophetic anointing in our life. Because my main function as an apostle is to build spiritually with wisdom. But there's a part that we need builders and we need prophets to help us to build. So that's just important that, that you can just come say, I'm a prophet. Yeah, what do you have for the people? What do you have from God to the people? The word prophet is the word prophetes in Greek. And the word pro means before. Fetes means to be, uh, to speak forth. In other words, a prophet is someone that is before the presence of God and then speaks forth. Uh, I'm going to say to the online people, say amen on that. So uh, it's very important. There's so many things I want to share with you. And, uh, but before I do that, we're going to start the new series and we're going to go into, uh, we're going to start the fast tomorrow. And this is very key for you to fast. And we're going to see the power of fasting. Before I get into the word of the Lord for 2020, 20, for 2024, I want you to see um, what is why we need to fast. What's the purpose of fast? What is fasting? Fasting is the very simple way, the abstinence of food. In other words, you do, you do it partially, you do it completely totally so i want you to see the power of fasting so this is very important for you to see that you understand what is behind it nothing is being done without intentionality so i'm going to say it again somebody say amen or something so um is the power of fasting there's a book that i have 
and I, I want you to get it and you're going to get more information the power of breakthrough prayer and breakthrough fast and they will tell you exactly the steps how to fast can I hear an amen on that so this is something you need to read every believer need to read the book because when you see what's the power why fasting is so powerful today is very uh, uh, fashion is very uh, is the tendency of the uh, how do you say um, for the people to fast but to lose weight and which is good I mean but that's not the intentional fast and the intermittent, intermittent fast. Um, a lot of people do that to lose weight. So I'm not criticizing. It's good. I've done it. So that's good. But my intention is why? Because fasting accelerates death to self. If your flesh is controlling you, you, you fast. Number two, fast means to crucify the flesh. In other words, if there's desires that you have that you can't control for food, uh, desire for drugs or pills or something, fast. Three, fasting causes you to keep you in the age of the spirit. If you want to see a man in the cutting age of the spirit, you see a man of fasting. In other words, he's always saying what God is saying and doing. I wish I could hear an amen. And four, fasting purifies your spirit man. Because what in the whole year, there's a lot of things that contaminated our spirit. Words, doctrines, uh, uh, contamination of words, many things. So we need to, when we fast, we literally purify our spirit. Uh, three, fasting breaks mental cycles and patterns. In other words, there's some people that always think in sexual things. There's people always think in negative and oppression and fear. So you want to break those thoughts? Fast. I wish I can hear an amen. Fasting stir up the anointing in you. Every time I'm fasting, I am feel that anointing coming upon me. Four, fasting sharpens our spiritual per perception. Before I went to, I'm going to share today about the word of the Lord. I've been days, I've uh, been hours, weeks in the presence of God fasting. Because I hear my, the way God's, the form of the voice of God for me is hearing. Uh, Prophet Glenda and Prophet Chris, my the family here, uh, they always, they sears, they sears. In our case, it's hearing. So God has a way to speak to you. So fasting sharpen that. In other words, you, you hear the voice of God clearly. Number four, fasting draws you closer to God. Number five, fasting establishes discipline. And keep going, please. And the power breakthrough fasting because spiritual breakthrough. Uh, meaning that if there's anything, how many of you have things in your life that you've been fast, you've been praying, you gave, you pray, but you haven't seen the breakthrough? I, let me see. Well, fast. Somebody said, but I did it. Well, do it again. <laughs> do it again. No, it's not only one time. So fasting helps us to sustain the flow of the supernatural. Whenever people think that I am called to the supernatural. Everything I do is supernatural because that's what my assignment is. So, but when, when I fast, it's like sometimes we come comfortable because we prophesy, we do miracles. Without fasting, we think, I don't need to fast. Well, it's not that. <laughs> it's just to sustain that flow. I wish I can hear an amen. Fasting means to appropriate power. One of the ways to appropriate power, if you want to be more powerful, more anointing, fast. Keep going, please. So that it will be um, the purpose of fasting is to humbling yourself, hunger for God, for God to give you hunger. The dangerous times we are living in, we need to fast. Four, what's the purpose of fast? Six, the face of God. Three, the necessity of breakthrough. How many of you have a necessity of a breakthrough in your personal finances, uh, family? Um, one, two. The rest of it, don't, you don't need any breakthrough. See, the thing is you need to be intentional. <laughs> you need to be intentional. Okay, so the purpose is direction and guidance. 
every time in January, not only in January, we do it two or three times that we do a congregation of fast and it's to give direction. Tonight, tonight I will bring, uh, the Lord spoke to me to bring a word of the Lord for you personally. And we're going to prophesy to everyone because this is the season you need direction. Sounds so exciting, my God. Okay, so let's go. So that's the purpose of fasting, guidance, and direction. Keep going. And uh, the purpose is to appropriate power, to appropriate presence, to face a crisis. Every time you have a crisis, I want you to fast. Amen. That's what I do because I know what fast is going to have. When we face an impossibility, if you have any impossibility, maybe your health, maybe your finances, start fasting. Start fasting when we face an impossibility and to consecrate and to separate for God. Majority of my cases, I fast and pray to consecrate and separate myself to the Lord. Keep going, please. So um, how to uh, do the fasting? Okay, how do I do it? Where do I start? Proclaim the fast. As a matter of fact, to say, Father God. No, no, but say it louder. Father God, I proclaim. A fasting, a fasting for 21 days. For 21 days, I present all my petitions. I present all of my petitions, and I join my faith. And I join my to faith all my brothers and sisters. With all of my brothers and sisters, and I proclaim before you. And I proclaim before a you fasting a fasting for the next 21 days. For the next 21, say days. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, give me the grace. Give me the grace. Remove hunger from me. Remove hunger from me. Give me more hunger for God. Give me more hunger for God. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I receive your strength. I receive your strength. To fast. To fast. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I receive even my rewards. I receive my rewards. Right now. Right now. I commit to fast. I commit to fast. And to live a fast life. And to live a fast life. Amen. 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 Okay, you already did it. Can you put your hand together? Okay, keep going. So that is fasting. Now I'm going to go to the, this is the spiritual side. Can we go to, please? We're going to give you the benefits of prolonged fasting. This is the medical part. This is the science. John, you need to help me with that, son. Alejandro, I'm sorry, you scientist. You rock it, Alejandro. Okay, so the benefits of prolonging fasting. Uh, this is outside of the benefits of number one, regrow brain cells. And many of you are losing memory. <laughs> I think fasting will help you. Number two, grow what? Mitochondria. Why? Well, I, I don't have the time to get into explained. Number three, reproduce stem cells. Number four, decrease tumors. Keep going. Replace bad proteins. Increase what? Okay, why do you need that? What is that? Because we have a lot of free radicals in the body. We got junk flying around in your body. So you need that fasting. And it gives time to the body to recover because it is already in the last study that Harbor brought was that the people that eat too much age faster. So if you leave, eat at less, so many of you like to eat. Oh, praise God. Oh, geez. And me too. <laughs> body repairs. A lot of things repair. Have you been in fasting and then when you finish, you have a lot of pain in your knees and your bones when you finish because there's a, a body repaired. Uh, and number four, cells are more resistant to stress. Oh my God. How many of you have gone by chance, by stress and is stress? I want to see your hands. We all do. The tiger is loose. So you need to, it's not in the cage anymore. <laughs> so that is good benefits of fasting. Okay, you have fit 21. Okay, that's it. So can you put your hand together? How many of you commit to fast? 
Okay, you don't have no excuse from this moment forward to come and tell me, oh, apostle, I don't have no breakthrough in this area. Did you fast? Oh, I don't have, I'm, I'm still sick. Well, I can because I have diabetes. I can because, you know, you have, we have, I can't fast 21 days. I'm going to die. No, you're not going to die. You have 40 days uh, storage of uh reserves thank you apostle john Reser there's many of you have a lot of reserves i do have a lot of reserves so you're not gonna die oh oh i'm gonna die no that's why you ask the holy spirit to help you how many of you are gonna be excited to get into this path how many of you are gonna fast and you're gonna see a breakthrough come on all right so now we understand that and we're ready to fast Next Sunday, we're going to start the, um, because we do three things. We fast, we give God the first fruits, and three, we pray. Those are the things, things that we need God priority. Okay, let's go into the word of the Lord, and we're going to open in the book of Isaiah, chapter 46. I'm going to show you a verse that will blow your brain out. <laughs> it will powerful verse. Okay, let's read it together. One, two, three, go. No, 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 no. Can we read it like a full of joy and passion? One, two, three, go. Remember the former things of old. For I am God, and there is none other. I am God, and there is none like me. He's the one. Okay, what is Andre? Andre, can you, can you let me know? Okay, are you ready? Okay, let's go. Number, verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from okay, he said, I am God. L listen, this is what he's saying. I am God. I am the self-existent one. That I do what I want and what it pleases me to do. He said, and declaring the end from the beginning. In other words, he tells you what is going to be the end, your end, my end, from the beginning. That's why he's God. And from the ancient times, receive it, the things that are not yet done. Saying, my, my counsel, counsel shall, stand. shall stand. I like this one. And I will do all my pleasure. You know what he's saying? I am a sovereign God. And I do what he pleases me. You know why he declared the end from the beginning? Because he has control of the future. In other words, he says to you, I will do this with you. And he tell you ahead of time. Because he said, I have control of your life. If, you have, if I have control of your life, I control the future. So this verse is so powerful because we see the sovereignty of God. Declaring the future. Why? Because he can control the future. He can do whatever he wants. So this is so powerful. Now, well, let's go and understand. We're going to go into the prophetic word. Again, I don't know how many, how deep we're going to go because there's so many things that we can talk about. Okay, let's go. And we're going to go lift your hands to the Lord. Say, God, you are God. God, you are God. Say it, please. Say, you are God. You are God. And you do what you want. And you do what and you And what want. pleases you. What pleases you. No one will stop you. No one will stop you. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Okay, prophecy is about three people. Amen. When we talk about prophecy, it's about three people. One, the world, or the nations, the church of Christ, and three, Israel. All prophecy, all everything that I have to do with the future, it has to do with those three things. 
And we develop prophecy around that. If there's personal prophecy, yeah, because you're part of the church. So let's go. We're going to go a little faster. What is the purpose of prophecy? Why God gives you prophecy? Prophecy is for you to prefer, for you to know. How many of you want to know what God has for you in 2024? One, two, see, they're not intentional. They didn't even lift their hands. <laughs> okay, how many of you? Okay, come back tonight because all my pastor will prophesy over you. So if you're not intentional. So number two, prophecy is for you to prepare. Okay, it's not to intimidate you. It's not to uh, put fear in your heart. Prophecy is for you and I to prepare. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. We're going to see that. So, for I, brethren, would not have been ignorant. Oh, no. What is that? No. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. Okay. Let's go. One, two, three. Go. He was called to go out into a place which he would later receive for an inheritance. Obeyed, and he went out. Verse 6 and 7. 11, 6, and 7. I want you to see. The prophecy is for you to prepare. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned by God of things not yet seen, because he declared things that will happen in the future before, because he's God. And then he said, move with fear. And what's the next word? Prepared. Come on, go. Prepare. Come on, say it. Prepare. Prepare. So my job as an apostle, the job of a prophet, evangelist, teacher, is to prepare the church, to prepare the people, to prepare for what? What to do when things come. How can you be prepared when $20 million come into your hands? How can you be prepared when crisis hit the world? You need to be prepared. So he prepared an ark for saving of his house. The word the Lord will give you today is for the saving of your house. Can you put your hand together? All right. So we understand. Let's go back into the purpose of prophecies for you to know, for you to prepare. And number three is for telling the future. Because Revelation 12, 10 says, go says that the spirit of prophecy, Jesus, uh, Revelation 12, 10, is the spirit of prophecy. And I heard the voice of God now saying, and they accused the brother who accused them, verse 11, I'm sorry, verse 11. And then he said, and they overcame it, and they loved their lives unto death. They overcame by the word of the testimony and the, the word of the Lamb. In other words, you see the spirit of prophecy. When we talk about Jesus, it's about Jesus, everything about Jesus. Can I hear an amen on that? So let's go back into, uh, into the, the prophecy. No, let's go back into what, how God sees. When we say in perspective, lift your hands and lift to say it. Say it louder, please. Perspective. Perspective is the way you see things. What is your perspective about attending church? What is your perspective about money? So perspective have to do with you seeing things, how you see things, how God see things futuristically. How God see things. So now, number one, I want to see that again. Many of these prophecies, God doesn't work by year or by month. God works by cycles, times, and seasons. In other words, some of those prophecies might not come to pass this year. I prophesy that Argentina will be world, world champion in the soccer. And I did prophesy 2016. And it came to pass in 2022. If you have not seen it, you will say, oh, his false prophet. No, 
because prophecy, personal prophecies and not sovereign prophets, prophecies depend on the will of the people. If we pray for America, God will touch America. But if we don't, America is in trouble. So, we're going to see, so you're going to see some of the things. I've been prophesying for the last three years, five years, since 2020. We're going to see, number one, there will be times of global shaking. All things are being shaken. Number two, I mean government. A shaking in the church, shaking in the family, shaking in science, shaking in every area. God is doing the shaking, not the devil, God. Number two, there will be a global economic, economical collapse. In other words, I've been prophesying that for the last three years. And I'm not going to get into that, but because there's so many things I've been talking about. Number three, there will be a global worldwide famine in the earth. And that begin 2023 you will see the lack of food and you will see of many things in 2023 the lord said the next seven years from 2023 to 2030 you will see start seeing the famine in the land my my okay number four there will be natural disasters on the earth Somebody said, yeah, but we already, that will happen. No, the issue is that will intensify. So there always been disasters, but now is intensification. There will be various types of disease coming upon the earth. And two have to do with the air and with the skin. Are you ready? Are you pre- why, why are you saying that? Not to bring you fear, but for you to be prepared. Make sure you're eating healthy. Make sure don't have any open door again, you know, for the enemy. So there's two types of disease. I don't have the time, and I'm going to let a, a prophet Chris tonight to share more. There will be more perplexities and fear. You know what perplexity means? Uh, no way out. Not knowing where to go and what to do. That's the reason I have many, many uh, government officials came to me and asked me for counsel and advice. Because there's some things on the city and the state, there's no way out. Nobody knows what to do and where to go. So they will come to us. That's what prophets need to speak. That's what apostles need to be the trumpet. We need to sound the trumpet. Can I hear an amen, people? So we see perplexities. What is a perplexity? You get to a point where there's no way what to do and where to go. There's no way out. It's between the rock and the hard place. And this is the moment God will raise up men and women of God that will have the wisdom, the direction for the people. Okay, let's keep going. Times of corruption, disorder, confusion, and chaos. This is America. I'm going to talk a little bit on that. There will be an immigration crisis in the nations. You already saw it, 2023. 12 million uh, people came through the border. And the Lord spoke to me, among those people, there are terrorists. They are already inside the land. And they don't come to support America. They come to destroy America. Because there's a lot of corruption in Washington. There's a lot of confusion and chaos. Times of Noah are back in this season. What are, the, what are the days of Noah? Very simple. Wickedness to the highest level. Um, women corruption, the character of the corruption, the character of men. 
women and fallen angels have sex and they reproduce giants nephilims and those giants in 2010 the lord spoke to me those giants are already on the earth so the school of the spirit i will talk about how the spirit world will become so visible and there was a news that came yesterday of course it doesn't come in the news but it came out in in one of the uh platforms saying in miami they saw a giant in miami a giant of 10 feet tall monster we're gonna see the spirit dimension so real before our eyes that's the reason you need to walk in the spirit you cannot be living in the flesh you need to walk in the spirit i wish i can hear an amen so the back of snow are here crime the shedding of blood violence sexual perversion we're gonna see that and they're here not that we start oh yeah no they, they're here nobody say amen all the nations of the earth are under the judgment of god right now all the nations of the earth are on the judgment of god all right you sound so excited the united states of america is already is already why did you erase it why did you go back okay the united states of america is already under the judgment of god tonight i will release the prophetic word for tonight and I know my, my prophets here got some word for the United States. God fed up with it. God, when God told me that, I started weeping and crying. America is on the judgment. Corruption in every level. Confusion. Chaos. Abortion on demand. And the Lord is tired of the sin of this nation i love america and i pray for america but unfortunately it's under judgment because they need america needs to repent america needs to repent so many people said it will start no it already started it and i will tell you ahead more what we'll keep going please um, so you will say that we're living in tribulation time, not great tribulation. That's seven years of great. No, I'm saying tribulation. The earth already entered in a period of sorrow and pain. You will see things that you've never seen before on the earth. The earth will be the days of pain and, and suffering are coming upon the earth. This is prophecy for the world a deep darkness will cover the earth yes. the Lord said to me media the media all the channels are pumping darkness every day that's the reason we need to be renewing our mind they bombarding you every day every day they're pumping darkness and this is a deep darkness. There will be a cyber attack against, not to the United States, against the United States from China. The Lord spoke to me on 2020, and then he told me about the cosmos, war in the cosmos. Who controls the cosmos? And you will see the cyber attack is already on working. They're working on it. China's always working also in those viruses. Lab, they will be fabricated and produced in labs. China will be a superpower by 2030. It's not gonna be America. Because this nation is going in descending darkness. 
but there's a remnant. You will see, uh, there's so many people that are afraid to prophesy those things because our ministry is all over the world and they think, oh, what about if you go to China? They're gonna... Well, that's what the Bible says. That's what God is saying. Keep going, please. There will be a massive attack of sexual perversion against, again, on the youth for the next seven years. Youth, I'm going to make you a challenge for this 21-day fast. Can you fast your social media? I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. There is an urgency in my voice. There's dangerous times are coming. The next attack on the youth. Because I told you, it will be like days of Noah. Sexual perversion. Demons having sex with women. And reproducing giants, nephilims, monsters. The world is entering in a perilous times. Again, this, the majority of this already started it. It will be the intensification of it. The year 2024 will be the year of war and conflict in the world. You will see how America will come to rescue one of its friends. And you will see America enter in another world. You will see so many things. You're going to see conflict everywhere. Watch the church. Can you put your hand together, please? Okay, now, what did I tell you all that? Not just to bring fear on you, because it's for you to prepare. Are you prepared for those things? Is your body prepared? Is your spirit prepared? Is your soul prepared? Is your mind prepared? These are the times of seeking God. These are times of not playing church. This is time to be committed to the Lord. Can I hear an amen, people? Okay, so um, I'm not going to get into the church. I'm going to go tonight because I already, I don't have more time. Um, so the church... Is a schedule for a massive what, what the Holy Spirit is saying what the Holy Spirit is saying to you how many of you can say I belong to the Church of Jesus Christ so that's that's for you a schedule for a massive global revival number two the church is scheduled for a great spiritual awakening the church is about to reap the greatest harvest of souls The church of Lord Jesus Christ is a schedule to see the end time glory of God. I know 100. I am totally, emphatically, completely convinced that this church is one of those churches that God will raise in that glory. That is already raising. The church is a schedule to see the end time glory. The Lord will release the end time wealth transfer over the church with two purposes. To finance the harvest and to make a storehouses to preserve the people in times of famine. In other words, God will prosper you, not for the sake of you, not for the sake of me. It will be to fund the harvest and to, to preserve your family, your neighbors, your brothers, your sisters, when crisis. When nobody else has food, you will have food. When nobody else has a, a place to go, you're going to have a place to go. Can I hear an amen, people? So this tonight, I, I, was, I was a prophet Chris to share. Keep going. Keep going, please. The church will be restored to dominion, to its dominion mandate of expansion. The church lost the vision for expansion. How many business people, business woman, businessman, we have here tonight? Lift your hands. 
Do you think in terms of expansion or you think in terms of saving? Well, there's one or two. But the majority, even pastors, they lost the vision for expansion. That's why we see the transfer of saints, not the saving of people. They being there because there's no expansion. People don't think in terms of expansion. They lost it. So the Lord said, I will restore my church to its dominion Monday. Dominion means expansion. The restoration of the priesthood, I'm going to finish with this, and then I will continue tonight. The restoration of the priesthood. 24 represent, Revelation chapter 4, verse 10, 24 represent the priesthood. 24, number 24. God speaks through numbers. And let's go to Revelation chapter 4, verse 10. And the four and 20, 20 elders fall down before him. And they sit down on the throne and worship God. That's what elders, that's what priests does. God will restore the priesthood of the church. And listen, listen, this is important. Because we lost the altar in our homes. We stop offering sacrifices to the Lord as priests. Number three, there's a lot of corruption in the church and the leadership. And you will hear of leaders being exposed. Somebody said being exposed, why? Because when you live in sin and you don't repent. First, God gives you times, grace to repent. If you sin continually. There is a moment of grace where God says, I will give you time for you to repent. So God give us all times of repentance. If you don't take it, God will expose you and God will do it publicly. Can I hear an amen? So we, as a priest, as a priest, there's a lot of corruption, a lot. And a lot of people lost the priesthood. They forget who they are. We are in times that we need to define who we are. I am a priest. I am not a, a, a motivator. I am not an encourager. I am a priest of the Most High God. The way I talk, the way I speak, the way I dress has to reflect who I am. There's so many people that they don't take positions. They neutral. I'm not ashamed to say I'm a preacher. And sometimes it's because there's sin in their life. And you mean you're not going to, you didn't miss God, you haven't sinned? Yeah, the Bible says we all sinners. The Bible says that somebody says that I never sin is a liar. We all do. But that's why God has repentance. If you don't repent, God will expose you. God will expose me. So that means... Any sin that is being is repented of, God will not judge. Can I hear an amen, please? All right. So we let's go back and we finished. 1037. Ooh. Let's go back. So there's gonna be a judgment of the priesthood. You're gonna see that judgment, that exposing of people are with money. Different areas, sex, money, fame, pride. Oh, this is incredible. Times of deception. This is 
every day I receive a phone call or a text of someone that once was Christian and now they deny in it. There will be times of great apostasy. And I'm going to touch that verse before I close. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. There will be times already, not that will be, but already. The Spirit speaks expressly, boldly. I mean, clearly. That in the latter times, some, I'm glad there are some, not everybody. Some shall depart from the faith. And I'm going to say something very powerful. And I'm going to close with this. Can you change the, the, the song? I went to study the word depart. That word depart. Can, can you hear me? I say, can you hear me? No, listen, can you hear me? The word depart means to distance, to withdraw gradually from what you used to believe to change position, to adapt it, to embrace other things and to deny the truth in other words apostasy is very subtle apostasy is not going to be from one moment to another first i can see when people leave the church they always sit at the front and then they sit in the middle then the city, they start taking distance. Many people, because deliverance is one of the truth that has set free to millions of people through my books and videos. How many of you give God thanks for the ministry of deliverance? Can I hear an amen? Okay. You know how much persecution I have for that. Why? Because the enemy, because deliverance is dirty. When you see people vomiting, <laughs> you know, and it's not, it's not, Jesus did it publicly, but this is what they do. Depart means gradually. Can, can you look at me for a moment? Can you look up for a moment? Gradually, distance yourself from the foundational truth. In other words, it's so subtle that we sometimes can be in transition to apostasy and we don't know it. People used to come every Sunday to the church. After COVID, is once a month. And after 23, is just once every two months. Congregating and attending church is not a priority. You start withdrawing. They withdraw from deliverance. They withdraw from from prophesying they would draw from from telling the truth they would draw they start putting distance I don't want to I don't want to relate to Apostle Maldonado because he's always talking about demons he's always talking about supernatural I listen and you start distancing yourself from churches and ministry that they demand commitment How many of you accomplished what you accomplished because you were committed to it? Of course God did it. I know God did it. Lift your hands. But you commit to it. 
if you don't commit to her in your marriage, it's not going to work. You need to be committed to her. Nothing will work without commitment. But in the last days, people start departing. I don't want commitment. I want to hear something that I can adapt my life, personal life, and I don't have to be committed. Depart from the faith, from the saving faith. Give heed to seducing spirit. You know what give heed means? To embrace other truth. To embrace something as you withdraw from foundational truth. You start embracing other truth. And the Bible, listen to what he said. Why? Because the seducing spirit. You know what seducing spirit does? They they the one that cause insanity. People are crazy today because of this demonic spirit. And then the Bible says, doctrines of devils. The word doctrines, you know what that means? Doctrine means well-packaged teachings. well-packaged teachings that sound logic the devil is not gonna take you out of the church and pull you out it's just little by little little by little little by little you start congregating less you pray in less you seeking god less i'm busy i'm busy and he uses your job your business your even family members to stop you from seeking god and then and then they start hey, hey you don't have to be crazy about jesus you're going to heaven anyway so you start pulling you, drawing you, drawing you, drawing you. And then you start saying, okay, I have to listen to something that I adapt to my personal life. Yes. Seducing spirit, well-packaged teachings. Yes. In other words, it's not like, wow. No, it's like they sound deep, logic, and good to the flesh. Yes. I'm finished. I don't have time to get into that, but how many of you can lift your hands? What a days we're living in. Days of revival, yes. Days of awakening, yes. Days of glory, yes. Times of finances, prosperity, yes. For the church, not for the world. Come on, pray, pray. Those that are watching online. Those that are watching online, thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching today's message. If you are watching today and you have not made the decision to accept Jesus into your heart, I want you to repeat this prayer with me out loud and say with me after me, Father God, I recognize that I am a sinner. I repent of all my sins. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, come into my heart right now. Amen and amen. If you did this prayer, thank you so much. If this video has been a blessing to your life, please share it with your friend and subscribe to our channel so don't miss out any other video or live broadcast. Thank you so much. We love you, bless you. See you next time.